Welcome everyone, and thank you for watching Fast Track Tutorials. My name is Mario Stabile. I'm a character artist working on the AAA industry since 2014. I've worked in franchises such as Call of Duty, Mafia, Hitman, Alien, and many others. Today, we will be covering how to simulate custom weights on Marvelous Designer. For that, we're going to be creating a very simple backpack and a box-like object that will be placed inside to create the filling effect that a backpack will have. First thing we need to do is to create the base pattern that we will be using as the structure for our backpack. We just need to create a rectangle, approximately the size of the back. Something this size should be good. Now we're going to be adding some curvature to the corners using the round corner by length tool. You can use any measurement you want since at this point anything is about the aspect you want to give to the backpack. Now that we have rounded the bottom corners, what we want to do is to freeze it because we want to use it as a solid base for the backpack construction and we don't want it to move anywhere. Then we're going to be duplicating it. That's to create the front part of the backpack and we need to flip the normals so that they are facing the right way. Both pieces need to have their interior normal part on the interior of the backpack. Now we are going to be creating the size of the backpack. For that we want to measure each segment of one of the patterns. With that we can get the approximate width for the rectangle we are going to be creating now. We put that width in there and then an approximate height that we think that will work with the backpack. Something like this should work. Now we rotate it and put it in place. And we're going to be freezing the front panel of the backpack and then sewing all three pieces together. For that, we're going to be using the free sewing tool and connecting both sides of the side panel to both pieces of the back and front. Like that. Now we can simulate and see how it looks. Alright, since what we're interested in now is to preserve this shape, if we would unfreeze the front pattern and simulate, we will get this. Since we are not interested in that, and what we want to do is to preserve the shape of the backpack without having to get the patterns freeze, we're going to go to Preferences, Simulation Properties, and then go to Gravity, set it to zero. Now when we simulate back again, we will see that we are not getting any extreme deformations of the backpack because it's not being affected by gravity. We can also change the sewing angle on the sewings we did before to achieve a more straight angle result on our backpack. Okay, looking good. So now we're going to be creating the flap for the backpack. First thing we're going to be doing is selecting the avatar and hiding it. To create the flap I'm going to be using as a base, again, the base part of the backpack. We duplicate it again. We rotate it and place it where we need to have it. There we go. Now to see both parts I like to create an offset internal line like 50 millimeters or so and then we're going to be sewing um, the upper part of the top flap to the lower part of the back flap and vice versa just like that also because this is a flap and we always want it to be on top of the other patterns we don't want it to intersect in any way we want to add a layer one value property in here so that even if we simulate it doesn't intersect at any point. Okay, now that we simulate, you will see that this stays like that, very oddly. This is because we don't have any gravity activated. So to fix this, what I like to do is to create an internal line on the front panel, something like this. And now what we're going to be doing is to see that uh, to the bottom segment of the flap. Just like that. Okay, since it's not centered, let's go and select Edit Sewing 
we're going to be aligning it a little bit better like yeah like this is good all right so now when we go and simulate this you can see that it actually intersected but just for a few seconds because we activated layer one preset on it so basically it's not possible that it stays intersecting or stays under the other patterns it's always going to stay on top all right now that the backpack is looking acceptable we're going to be activating the avatar again for that uh, we're going to go to right click and show all avatars uh, here okay next step we're going to be doing is creating the straps of the backpack that are going to be holding it in place for that, first thing we want to do is to bring the backpack closer to the back of the character. So we select it, put it in place, rotate it if we need. And once we're happy with the result, next thing is going to be creating the first strap. And then we will duplicate for the other one. For it, we just need to create a rectangle uh, that has the measurements that we like for it. It doesn't need to be anything specific. Just put the numbers that you consider that are going to be valid. Since we can change proportions later on, that's fine. Just go with whatever. Okay, here we have it. Put it in place like always. Any rotation position you need. And now, after positioning it in place, we need to seal them. And we're going to do a similar thing to what we did with the flap. We're going to be creating an internal line on the back panel of the backpack there. And we're going to be creating a rectangle. It is important for it to have the same width as the strap so that it doesn't create any folds and works good. 22.4. Yes. Okay, so now we can change the size, put the one on the strap, both on the upper segment and bottom segment. And now we're good to see both. Actually, um, I'm going to be creating an offset line for the strap. So we will select the top edge of it, like we did before with the backpack. Offset line. Put same measurement as the height of this of the rectangle we have on the back panel. And now we can see both up and bottom and the sides as well. So we're going to do first bottom. Then top. And now, like always, we're going to be selecting everything and freezing to simulate. And last step would be sewing the bottom part of the strap to one side of the of the backpack with free sewing. That way we're going to achieve a good twist uh, on the strap and it's not going to feel like too straight. Good. Now we make sure uh, the stitching is properly aligned. All right. Okay, we show back again the avatar. There we go. And now we simulate. Okay, it looks a little bit tight, I think. Let's put it back on place and see. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be too tight under the armpit so we're going to give it a little bit more length we select the bottom segment pull it out a little bit yeah this looks a little bit better so now that we're happy with the length of it we are going to create a new profile add a full grain leather preset which is the more rigid one that we have on marvelous and we're going to assign it to the strap this way, as you can see, we are getting a quite more solid looking strap. Uh, and if we cannot achieve to put it in place, we can use the track on avatar uh, to center it a little bit more. We are also going to be increasing the particle distance or well, decreasing to 10 so that there is no stretch polygons under the armpit or anything and it looks all smooth. And last thing is going to be replicating the strap we're going to be creating a symmetric pattern with c-wing place it on the side 
now we need to find it. Uh, should be somewhere. Ah, there we go. Now let's just move it and put it kind of in the same place as the other one. Okay, that looks good. Now we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did before, uh, but for the other for the other strap. We're going to create another internal line. We can just copy it, and place it there. And now, same thing. We're going to see you top. We're going to see you bottom. I was checking that everything was correctly aligned. Yes. And now the side. Okay, good. Actually, let's check just in case. Yeah. Okay, so here we can see the stitching is uh, flipped with Control B. We can flip it, and now it's good when we simulate. Once again, we do the same thing with the tag to avatar, so that we can center it a little bit more. And now that we have our straps and our backpack done, uh, we are going to be simulating this to see how it looks. Okay, and this is the result without the gravity activated. As you can see, it still looks pretty good, uh, but obviously it doesn't have any weight feeling inside. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So we're going to be selecting all the backpack and the straps, and we're going to be exporting it all together to a third-party software uh, to use as a reference to model the, um, the interior. Okay, so now we go to 3D Max, which is the software we're going to be using in this case. We import the reference we just exported from Marvelous, and here we have it. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next is to model a box-like object, very similar to the uh, shape of the backpack, or similar to what we will want it to have inside. Maybe you have like some books, maybe you'll have some other object inside. So just model something that in volume looks similar to it. As you can see, it doesn't need to be very precise since we are going to be able to move it and adjust it later on inside Marvelous. Uh, but this needs to be like a similar and approximate base to what we want to have inside. Okay. Now that we have approximate proportions for it, uh, we just need to rotate it, put it as best as we can in place. And we're going to be subdividing it uh, to avoid any possible um, simulation issues in Marvelous uh, and also to achieve a more rounded shape. Um, you can do this with as many objects as you want. Uh, it doesn't need to be just one. It can be like multiple boxes, one sphere, a teapot, whatever you guys want. Uh, what's important is that it has enough subdivisions because Marvelous uh, intersects and interacts uh, on a very bad way with low poly objects. Uh, it's easier for it to to clip and to get stuck, so make sure, make sure it looks like a high density um, object like this. And we're going to try to smooth it as as much as we want to make it round and make it feel softer inside the the backpack. So we're going to be tweaking uh, the original segments so that the borders looks a little bit softer. A little bit more. Okay, something about this is good. Uh, we make sure that we have enough subdivisions. This density would be good. Uh, you can use more, but it's not really necessary. And now we're going to be selecting the object, making sure it's centered in the backpack again, uh, and export it, export it uh, to bring it into Marvelous. Okay. We do it as obj, we put the name that we want, and we also make sure that it's on quads when we export. Okay, that's all good. All right. Okay, so we go to File, Import, obj to Garment, and now load as Garment, and when we simulate, it will obviously uh, actuate as a garment inside Marvelous Designer. That means that we can change any parameter that we will normally be able to adjust in any garment, 
like weft, warp, thickness, uh, gravity, particle distance, and that really widens the opportunities we have to modify the volume and um, way of behaving of this garment. Okay, so now that we have it, we're going to go back to preferences. We're going to enable the gravity for the scene. Uh, default value is minus 980, sorry, 9800. Okay, so now we're going to simulate the garments. So you can see we're having some very serious clipping issues. Uh, that's due to the layer one value that we assigned to the flap. We need to set that back to zero. This was useful before, but we really don't need it now. So in zero, it will work good for now. And we're good, going to put minus one on the garment for the inside so that we make sure it always stays inside of the backpack and doesn't go out or clip. Now we simulate again. And as you can see, it looks more natural. Obviously, it's not the final result, but it's not clipping and it all stays inside. You can also see that the interior has folds and has a more soft feeling than what we brought from 3D Max. So to avoid uh, having this very soft feeling on the object, if we wanted to make more rigid, we're going to activate Solidify. And from here, we can also trick the strength to make it more rigid or less rigid. I think about 80 is a good value. And now when we simulate, we'll see. Okay, as you can see now, it stays more with the original shape, at least the inside object. And that is exactly what we were after. Okay, so now we select both the straps, we unfreeze them, and we simulate again. As you can see, that feels a lot more natural than before. Um, now we're going to increase our particle distance or decrease we're going to set everything to 10. We are going to simulate again. That should make our folds a little bit more natural and defined. Okay, like that. And now actually I'm realizing that the, the flap is a little bit too long. So we're going to be freezing everything. And we are going to unfreeze the flap and select the bottom segments and make it shorter so that it fits better the backpack see that is a little bit better yeah that works in case that we want to make the upper part of our backpack less flappy and less baggy uh, we can still make this shorter and you will see that it makes everything a little bit more straightened like that to my opinion that looks better so it's going to stay like this and that will be it for a realistic backpack with weight inside. As you can see, it's not that difficult. It's just a few steps. Uh, obviously, it can be done a lot faster without any explanation. And it's a very good trick uh, because it expands a lot the options that we have to modify how our backpack feels because now we could uh, disable Solidify, for example. Let me hide the, the flap. So we disable solidify and we can trick all kinds of parameter in here uh, since it's a garment we can uh, either simulate with solidify that will feel a little bit softer edit the weft edit warp or even play with pressure so that it feels like a more soft feeling inside uh, and you know it depends really on what you really want to achieve but it's a lot better to work with a garment inside the backpack rather than just a modeled object uh, because it will never feel as uh, flexible or uh, will never offer as many options. Okay, so thank you guys. Hope you really enjoyed the tips. I really hope to see some amazing backpack from you guys on the internet. And thanks again for watching Fast Track Tutorials.